when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory he sheds on our way when we do his good will he abides with us still trust and do that I didn't know it to trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. That part where I was silent, I was just testing all of you. (laughs) All right, trust and obey. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another time in your presence. Father, we thank you for those that are on their way coming because you will bring them here safely. Thank you because the entrance of your word today will give light. It will give understanding. Thank you because we will not be like fools who look into the mirror of the word and go away without fixing what needs to be fixed. The grace to obey your word today in the name of Jesus. We ask for ourselves and everyone will join us. Thank you, precious Father. Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Our topic today is a very big one. A very, very big one. It starts with the letter V. Very, almost the last of the year. Vengeance is a violence one, yes. It's very, <laughs> very, very violent. You know, vengeance. What is vengeance? Vengeance. Sister Dami, vengeance. Mike, please. about vengeance, I think of the words retaliation and revenge. Mm. And I've just been wanting to have your help as well. Yes. Retaliation and revenge. Thank you. Another person. Vengeance. On this side, Sister Titi, what is vengeance? Vengeance. What comes to mind when you think vengeance? Um, I think I think that's what Danny said. It's like paying someone back but negatively. Yes. Paying them back but negatively. Thank you very much. Any other person? Vengeance. What comes to mind? An eye for an eye. A tooth for a tooth. Wow. <laughs> that's, 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 it's a very strong word. Let's look at our memory verse. This is why we uh, sang the song, Trust and Obey. Our memory verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.15. One, two, go. See that no one render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourself and to all men. First Thessalonians 5.15. So basically telling us, vengeance is not for children of God. Children of God must not be avenging themselves. Christ is telling us, do not render evil unto any man. Don't render evil for evil. If someone had done evil to you, what does that make that person? If someone did evil to you, what what does that make that person? An evil person, right? But if you do evil back to them, what does that make you to? An evil person. So don't, don't, don't fight a pig, right? Like they say. 
Because if you fight a pig, pig knows to fight in dirty spots. You know, a pig will only bring you down to their level. So I pray that we'll be wise uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Introduction. Daily interactions call for offenses between people. There is no way that the people you interact with will not offend you. So let's, let's, I want to go, I want to turn left. People who just started interacting, husband and wife. <laughs> has there been offense? In, in <laughs> has there been offense in, how, how long has it been now? Almost, uh, how many, many months, four months? Three months? Three, okay. Even in that short period of time, has there been offense? Or, okay, see? Yeah, I know, I know. Well, David too is gentle. So who is the who is the offender and the offensee? Who is the offensee? <laughs> so when you daily interact with people, there is bound to be offenses, whether as a couple or as colleagues at work or people in the marketplace. You know, when you interact, there are bound to be offenses. Now. Vengeance seeking is to harm someone in return for an offense or perceived offense. And this is where it is worse. For an offense, when you want to avenge yourself for an offense or perceived offense. Sometimes, some people, we think they have offended, we perceived. You know, they didn't mean it. It is not exactly what happened, but that's how you perceived it. And they say, how could he have, what did he mean? Did he, you know? And then you want to avenge yourself just from perceived offense or perceived injury. God will help us. Amen. God forbids us from avenging ourselves. Uh, Leviticus 19 verse 18 says, thou shall not. And it's not, it's, this is not me paraphrasing. Leviticus 19 verse 18 says, Thou shall not avenge. Thou shall not. So whether it is an actual offense or a perceived offense, do not avenge yourself. So how do you respond when someone wrongs you or tries to discredit you? You know, these words are very powerful. When you feel like someone is trying to discredit you, Sometimes these are perceptions, right? How does someone discredit you? Sometimes you feel, it's, it's a feeling. You know, the person did something and you just thought that was what they were trying to do. Do you rehearse old offenses and feel hurt again? How many of us do that? You know, be honest, be honest. Old, thank you, thank you. Old offenses, you sat down again, even though the person had apologized. It happened last month. It happened two weeks ago. Last year, you know. <laughs> okay. So if, you have, if we have discussed it, mm. then I'm good. I don't usually come back mm. to it. Even if I'm hurt by it. But if we did not talk, talk about, about it, that's when it replays in my head and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And then I, if it's somebody that I really don't want to have that word with, although I try my best to make sure I speak about it, but if I cannot, because sometimes when you think, think about every single thing, people think you're petty. Yeah. So sometimes... I just move on from it and ask the Spirit of God for help. Yes. Thank you very much for, for sharing. Yes, yeah, so when, when you perceive a wrong was done to you, please, if you can, you know, try to talk with the person. So it is our prayer that the Lord will teach us how to close the doors on past hurts in Jesus' name. So our lessons for today is divided into three outlines. And we're going to run through them. But before we do, let's read our, uh, our text. The text for today's teaching is in the book of Romans 12, 14 to 21. Romans 12, 14 to 21. The 
Bible says, bless those who persecute you. Do not curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy. And weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. <laughs> Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, not poison. <laughs> In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their head. Imagine. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Don't do, don't conquer evil with evil. You know, that one, one of the passages, they don't conquer evil with more evil. You know, some people say, you do me one, I do double. <laughs> he said, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't conquer evil with evil, but conquer evil with good. It is a loaded uh, passage. Anyone wants to, any reaction, any reflection? Yes. Praise God. Good morning. So, um, you know, we um, kind of talked about this, and the Holy Spirit kind of revealed through my husband, like a very simplistic way to look at this particular scripture. So it's like... Um, Humanly um, thinking, like human logic is like, ah, this person is doing it wrong, like to put them in their place kind of thing. But, you know, we, we ourselves can be that enemy. You are somebody's mm. enemy, <laughs> right? You are somebody, you're persecuting somebody sometimes without even knowing. So if we look at it that way, that see, I can love this person because, okay, they are doing this. They might not even know they're doing this. Or even if they are doing it and they know that they are doing it, it doesn't matter. We still just have to love them because that could be us to the next person. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other reflection? All right. If there are none, we'll go straight into the, uh, the outlines. Outline A, what are the causes of vengeance? The causes of vengeance. Why do you think people become vengeful? Causes, unforgiveness, unforgiveness, the failure to forgive. The, and then the, it's, it's, thank you, sir, the, the, the root of that is a hurt that we feel. When someone does something to us that hurt us, sometimes at our core, and we feel bad, and we want to get them back. We want to do them double. You know, the Bible says don't do that. Don't do that. People take, people try to take vengeance on past sins, not forgiving. Does it matter if the person asks for forgiveness or not? If the person did it and said, I did it. You know, there are some people that they did it and so what? They are not going to ask for forgiveness. Does that give you the liberty because he did not ask for forgiveness, I can, I can strike. Does that still give you the liberty? No. The Bible says we should not repay evil with more. That's what people do. He said, the Bible is complete. He said, don't repay with more evil. <laughs> because that's what we technically do. He said, look, you did that, I'll show you that I'm bigger than you. He said, when they go low, say, we go lower. <laughs> <laughs> You know, God will help us. The Bible says, when it comes to unforgiveness, it says, I need you to forgive them. One man came to Jesus and said, how many times must I forgive my brother? He's a very troublesome fellow. Before I slap him, I give him a righteous slap. I want to know, you know, how many times? 
Jesus said, 70 times, 7 times. How many? What's that? 490 times in one day. How many hours are in a day? How many? And if you can, if you, if you can keep offense, if you can keep 490 offense, what does that make you? <laughs> you must have a journal. You must have a, a, yeah. So Jesus is saying, look, just let it go. Because if you, if you can tell me, even in a lifetime, if you can tell me that I have been careful with that person, the person has been offending me for 427 times. <laughs> you, know, you know, if you can say that, that says something about you, that you are keeping record of malice. And you, you know, like, he has offended me now. This is the 400, uh, uh, come on, Abba. Even you need to check yourself. So let go, let go is what Jesus is saying. And Matthew 6, 14 to 15 says, if you don't forgive others their sins, your heavenly father will not forgive your sin. If you have to avenge yourself all the time, if you have to deal with people who offend you, how many times do you offend God? <laughs> and if God have to take, yeah, if God have to avenge himself every time. Uh -huh. So uh, one of the causes of vengeance is unforgiveness. Yes, ma'am. Offense, direct offense. Uh, what of? I also want us to also expand the horizon if it's within the context, context yeah. of the um, lesson. What of offenses that are done by people that are far from you, or dastardly or terrible offenses that are perpetrated on mm. very innocent people that have no strength, have no have no ability to even s defend themselves, talk less of even seeking vengeance. I know this vengeance is we're talking yeah. about my fellow brethren. I don't know if the manual does go yeah. that far no, 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 it didn't. to, you know, really, I don't want to yeah. say certain things, but, yeah. you know, really bad issues. How do we reconcile those? Do we also? Okay. <laughs> All right, they're layering it up. So please. Be, be, be preparing your answers. <laughs> it's cold, though. Please don't lay out. Thank more. you so much. So, good morning, church. Good morning, mom. Okay, I had wanted to ask earlier on. Yes, you do, for the online okay. audience. Oh, apologies. Yes, apologies. It's, okay. it's okay. Okay, so it's good to be back again here. It's my second time here. All right. I was going to say, give an illustration initially that. There are instances people don't really have a direct relationship with you, or they may do. And um, you're hurting, and they're happy that you're hurting. <laughs> it happens. There are times as little as you've just fallen on the floor, and people are laughing instead of showing you love. Mm. There are instances that you suffer a loss in one way or the other. It could be financial loss, it could be anything. And people are like, I'm happy that, yes, good for her. You know, look at that. So we, are, we live in a hurting world. We live in a world that people have, have gone away from the fundamentals, the basics that binds all of us together. Mm -hmm. So people, you know, they are no, more, no longer where we should be in the place of love and all of the things we listed here. You know, so those people, I think um, when we are talking about vengeance, we should not just people that need forgiveness or that hold on to the mm -hmm. past, a lot of people need healing. Yes. That's the next truth. Yes. People are hurting. Yes. Some people don't understand where they're hurting from. Yes. And you know, because we're having, um, the, what came to my mind is, some parents that need parenting again. So people <laughs> don't need, really understand love for what love should really be. So people are growing up without true love, yes. understanding what taking care should yes. be. So these are some yes. of those fundamentals yes. which I wanted to lay out. Yes. And, I, and I think from what you've said, you've just answered your own question. Because you understand that some of those people are hurting. Some of those people, they're going through. They're, take, they're just taking out their frustrations on you. You are not the source of their problem. <laughs> you know, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And God bless you both for the points you have expanded. And I think um, the key word, and she brought that, is parenting. 
is parenting. I know that we, those of us that grew up in the late 60s, 70s, you know that the default, they beat me, I cry and come mm. back home. First question they ask me, who beat you? Your age mate? Pa, pa, you are stupid. Go back. <laughs> that, is the, that, was the, that was the standard practice. Your age mate beat you, you are crying to the house. They will tell you, I didn't pay me a bit more in the best said in Yoruba. And they will push you out to go and avenge for yourself. So I think some people have carried those childish, my mate cannot beat me thing into adulthood. And that's what they have mirrored to their children. So they have children who, if the parents were wind, the children are wild wind. Because when you sow one corn, you get like 100 times return. So, so I think it's traceable back again to values in the home, ultimately. Because if your parents, you have seen them being vengeful, being people who gossip, you just assume it's a normal thing to do, right? And so I think it goes back to the point she's saying. It's about parents who also need parenting. Do you rejoice when your child beats other people's children <laughs> rather than scold your child to say you shouldn't do that? A lot of parents rejoice when they see it is their own child that is oppressing <laughs> others, mm. as opposed to when their own child is oppressed. Yeah. So we need to really check that also. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ma. And I think to Pastor Chenny's point, uh, yes, we'll go, let's give to uh, give it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I have a question. In a case whereby you have a child now, and this particular either boy or girl keep bullying your child every time. So what do you do? Huh? I think we shouldn't take laws into our hands. I, I know yes. there was a case in the yes. TV sometime last year or something where some parents went to a school and did some crazy thing because that child was yeah. being bullied. And I think it's, it's, it's part of what we're talking about, but I get it, that vengeance, it's, it's of the Lord. We shouldn't, so following our child to school to beat up that bully <laughs> would not be the right thing to do. <laughs> Yes. So, yeah, you know, like it's been said, let's make a report to appropriate authorities, but let's not take the laws into our own hands. If we take the laws into our own hands, you go and beat up another person's kid, you will land where you don't, you don't plan. God will help us. Yeah, you know, speak to Pastor Tenney's point, like when the uh, offense is institutional or it's some sort of... I, I, I thought about the case of South Africa. Like, you know, for a long time, they were oppressed. There was the um, apartheid system and thing. And the way they reconciled it, they had a reconciliation thing. The truth and reconciliation. Nobody went to jail. Nobody was. They just wanted them to admit that what they did was wrong, that you did us wrong for years, that you did bad, that you did, but nobody's going to jail. We forgive you. We you know, you admit that you did wrong and we forgive you and we become, we shake hands and we go. But some people say, no, no, for the thing that they did to us, we must go to jail, we must take an eye, we must take. So some people can hand it there. I mean, there was the case of Stephen when a whole group of people, you know, they stoned him. And the Bible says, as they were stoning Stephen, he was praying to God, he was saying, God, please forgive them. Do not lay this to their account. So it, it goes beyond, you know, just somebody in the office hurting you. There can be a whole system, you know, against you. Do you pray for the downfall of that system? Or do you pray that God forgive that system? Jesus commands us to... Yes, I, the, one of the things I, I think or found out about, I was reading from um, second, uh, First Kings 2. Pardon me. As the, as the time of King David's death approached, he, he gave this charge to ah. his son, Solomon. Yeah. Two, I am going where everyone at must, must someday. Mm -hmm. Must someday go. Take courage and be a man. I'll jump to five. Mm -hmm. And there is something else. You know that Joab son of Zeruah did yes. to me when he murdered my two army commanders. Mm -hmm. Abner son of Na and Amasa son of Jetha. 
He pretended that it was an act of war, but it was done in a time of peace. Mm. Staining his belt and sandals with innocent blood. Six, do with him what you think best, mm -hmm. but don't let him <laughs> grow old and go to his grave in peace. Yeah, yeah don't let him. You see, I, I, but if you want to discuss this, it's fine. I don't yeah. know why he said that. So, uh, should we, um, is this something, because sometimes it appears as if some people had source vengeance. Like, yes. I don't want to do this on my own, but my son, listen, you see that neighbor, you see that Mr. So, you see that he did A, B, and C. I will leave that to you, <laughs> you know. But then, when you look at the case of Jesus, he was killed. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are yeah, doing. Yes. So I don't know how to reconcile the two. Maybe there are instances that we have oh, by yeah. you. Oh, yeah. You know. No, no, no. Yes. Th that's actually part of our uh, oh. lesson text. Oh, okay. It's actually part of our lesson le not letting go, the reason for vengeance, not letting go of past hurts. You know, this is what exactly was happening. This person had hurt David. You know, there was a time Absalom was fighting David, and David was being run out of town. And when he was running out of town, this man was speaking evil against him. And David said, I will not do anything. I promise I will not do anything to you. And he said to God, he was promising before God, I will not do anything to that man. So he was bound. So even when he came back, he was bound by his oath that he would not do anything to that man. But then he was telling Solomon, his son, I have promised God that I will not do anything to that man. So I cannot hurt him. But I am telling you, that man must not go to his grave <laughs> in peace. <laughs> I want you to deal with him. I leave him to you. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I leave him to you. I want you to deal with him decisively. You know, the, these are coded messages. These are ways that vengeance are planted in the heart of people. Even parents, sometimes they do this. They'll say, look, our family and that family, I'm not telling you anything, yo. <laughs> but I need to tell you the history. See, that man and your father, they work together. That man betrayed your father. I'm not telling you anything, yo, but be careful. <laughs> Uh, yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Like what you just said now to me, I don't think there is anything wrong. In letting, pra praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Let that talk, man. If you want to talk reality, if you know somebody is your arch enemy and you know and you know, there is nothing bad in telling your children be careful. As a Christian, watch. Even the Bible says watch and pray. So you cautioning your children that. These people, they are, they are, by their nature, they normally dig pit for people. Mm. Watch out when you are dealing with them. I, to me, as a person, I do not think that is wrong. Mm. Yeah. Okay, my question, the question I wanted to ask before you made that statement was that, what if the, what the person did to you, maybe in the past five months, ten years, has left you with pain? You are not seeing that pain, as in, I mean, real pain. Not because you want to remember, but because there is a pain. That is always bringing back what that person did. How, how do you resolve it? How do we deal with pain? Praise the Lord. I mean, I'm not talking about the pain. I'm talking about the first um, statement that this, uh, Buki made about, you know, telling your children stuff. I know that it's, it's, um, it's, it's sounds and look like it's the right thing to do. But so many problems can be averted if we don't it's true for all it's true that if people I, I, I like I don't even understand how we can really t label somebody an enemy or that person is my enemy I, I don't know you know she's saying as I'm saying mine right so I I, I don't think there's somebody because we have only one common enemy and that's the devil I don't think so. Because the mother is like that doesn't mean the child will be like that. That's what I think. And I also feel that there are many things, there are many problems in homes today because mothers said something to their children. It is wise for us to really ask the spirit of God. It's not everything that we share for many other reasons. Many other reasons. It's very good to do so, but we have also have to be very careful to not begin to look for what is not lost in the life of the children. 
Because the thing about that is, you might not tell the children they are my enemy. But when my mother says stuff like that to me, automatically, my brain resets to when this person comes, I will not know that I'm giving an attitude. And I will. It is natural. Because your mother had told you something. So sometimes our children inherit enemy that is not necessary. It is very important for us to understand that it is good for us to have that, those kind of talks, but many times we sow seed in the heart of our children that are not necessary, that is not even part of God's plan for them. Everybody's journey is different. Mine is different from my mom's. Whatever my mom went through, I'm not going to go through it. But if my mom will sow seed in me, I will begin to walk to, towards it without me and my mom realizing that it was the seed that started it. I'm just trying to create a balance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. So you know how they say, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I think it's very dicey, and I think that's where the place of the Holy Spirit is. There's some information that you need to give your children to divert danger in the future. And that's the honest truth. There's a lot of things that I know. That pe- My dad is from a polygamous family of like 16 men. So you can imagine how much drama there is in that family. The information that I have about his siblings are useful. But fortunately for me, I haven't personally had an experience that would make me feel like, okay, this person is my enemy. I don't know if you know what I mean. So the part where Pastor Bumi said each person's journey is different is so important. So you as an individual, your relationship with God is very important. There are some people that they are generational enemies, and unfortunately, if you do not pass that information down, you people will always be on the bottom, whether you like it or not. And I think it's very important what she said. There's a place of the Holy Spirit telling you, this person, the devil is using them. Because that's what they teach us in, what's that thing? SOD. That's the first thing I think they teach us. That we all have one common enemy and that's Satan. Satan may use this person's daddy for you. But it doesn't mean they will use the son also. So that's the place of having the Holy Spirit to guide you part time. That's just what I wanted to share. But my question, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Should, is that biblical? Yes, so we'll get to it. All right, we have it. So we have a lot of interesting hands. We'll, we'll get okay. to all of them. I, I think for me, it's still double clicking on that parental responsibility not to perpetuate sowing the seeds of hurt. Mm. You can ring fence your children with prayer, you can keep them away from environments you perceive to be unhealthy for them. But sowing that seed into them, you are giving them an unnecessary trauma. Unnecessary. Because what happens, like Pastor Bumi said, is that where offense didn't even exist between yeah. that person and your child, your child will now create a misbehavior yeah. that will make them fit to be dealt with. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. But the point is, a personal example, my wife will remember, my father and his, uh, his nephews and nieces, who there's just a little gap between them. They were fighting. And then everybody thought it's this family versus that family. But no, when I go to London, I still stay in that person's child's house. We get on very well. So everybody was looking at me like betrayer. And I told them, I said, look, daddy, it is you and this people that have problem. Me and this person, we don't have problem. When you people were joined together, I was not part of it. They were good friends at some point, doing things together. I wasn't part of that enjoyment. Now that you are fighting, you want me to join? The, I'm not joining. I'm, I, they've not offended me. I have no offense against them. You guys should be able to talk over what is between you. It's all ego. between both. Of, I'm not part of it. So I was wise enough to take that stance, but my siblings took it on their, father, on their head as if it's a family against family battle. And so I was like, no, I'm not part of this. And at the end of the day, because I was not part of it, the other side were able to communicate to me their hearts, mm-hmm. why they were doing what they were doing, and I could understand with them to some point. And it gave me opportunity to tell them, yes, you have a valid point, but your approach is wrong. This, this, this. Then I gave them my dad's perspective of the story also, 
which they never looked at. And because I chose not to join the battle, I ended up becoming that mediator that See, brought both camps together. So and I think that's the role we yes, should play sometimes. Yes, yes, Don't say because you yes, hurt my father, yes, then you are my yes, enemy, and then I can't even yes, mediate. Yes, Praise thank God. you. Thank you very much. Sir. Yeah, so we'll go to my sister here, and then Sister Odu, and then Sister Dami. My question has been answered. Oh, okay. I wanted to ask, like, are we not failing as Christians if we focus more on the negative? Yeah. Just like um, you have read that um, do not keep count of the mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. So if we uh, pass it on to our kids, yes. we are actually planting a seed, yes. and that's a seed yes. for her to, yes. uh, to yes. carry on that pain that yes. we have. Yes. So we are encouraging our kids to, you know, yes. to so work for the devil. Yes, you're, you're so. very correct. You are very, so. and that's what Pastor B was saying, the Holy Spirit. You're very correct. And it's yes. saying human wisdom sometimes would want us to do things. You know, David was telling him, his son, I want this man, I have promised God that I will not do anything to him. But you don't have such covenant. <laughs> Deal with that man decisively. Make sure he does not go to his grave in peace. That was a father, it, there was a hurt in the past. It was making his son the devil in this way. The son will find an offense. He will find a reason to go and kill that man, to go and hurt that man. We should be careful with the seed we sow into children. You know, don't let them inherit your fight. Thank you. Yes, sister. Praise God. I just wanted to cite a personal example as well. My father is from a huge polygamous home with so many backings. Um, his siblings feel a certain way. He was fortunate enough not to pass that negativity to us. Mm. So um, when time came to forge relationships with our cousins, we started forging it. And um, it was so beautiful because the kids were totally different from their parents and all of the things that they carried. And my father loved it, even though he knew that <laughs> there was this battle. Uh, but unfortunately, the parents of those cousins started interfering into our relationship with their negativity. But to what you're saying here, we kind of shielded them off That's to just good. focus on building ours so that they can figure out how to fix their own other challenges. So it's super important how what our parents say. In my father's case, he didn't say anything negative. Mm -hmm. He was just happy that yes. we're trying to forge something ahead, even though he knows that they had their own challenge that they still have to fix. So praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Sister Dami, and then Sister Dami, and then we'll come back to you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. I know. I wanted to. Um, this will be respond to Dickness Shabala's question about like how do you like forgive when you're feeling so much hurt okay. um, I feel like I've had this conversation with some friends and that's why you really need like the Holy Spirit and to also understand that forgiveness is not something that is so easily done as a human but you actually need God so every time that hurt like every time you remember what that person has done you say God I am feeling hurt about this person help me to forgive this person because the way I feel right now I don't yes. even want to hear this person. So you have to actually like pray for forgiveness. And like I've had examples where like I felt like I was re like the person did me wrong. Like if I tell anybody, like you know that like, you were on the right side. And when you want to like solve it or like you know vindicate yourself or justify what has been done, like my what the Holy Spirit told me was that like go and keep showing love to that person. Co go and um, just keep being good. And I couldn't digest it. <laughs> And this person didn't feel like they were wrong. So it felt like I was apologizing <laughs> for what they had done wrong for me. Exactly. And I did it. And I just kept yeah. showing love. But I would be in pain and I would pray about yes. it every time. And like when I think about that, like after months, when I look back at that situation, the way that person's relationship and my relationship now is not so much filled with love. The person apologized like indirectly mm. and also like just showers me with so much love and peace now that I knew that it was God like trying to show me to be humble, but like it doesn't take human no, it, strength it, or not. It's like not you need yeah. God to be yeah, able to do yeah. that. You know? And see how that even between you and God, the relationship is even better. And you learn and you're at peace and you can pray and your prayer will be forgiven. But if you don't do what God is telling you to do, you keep the hurt, you're just hurting yourself. Uh, th yeah, exactly. So, Pastor Pius. Praise the Lord. I'll, Hallelujah. I'll, I'll give a personal example about. Um, passing the baton of uh, vengeance. Mm. Okay, when I, um, in my place, I was the first person that actually went to military school from my own place. So my dad was an NCO, the other person was an officer. 
So because I went into NMS first, mm. no, it was like a battle between two families. Mm. It was the battle was actually from mm. the village because of two different <laughs> that that's um, two different families. Who is greater? So when I got into military school first, I was seeing that I'm already shooting up. So the other person came in after me. And when he came to school, because we used boxes, call it army box, they were wooden boxes, all okay for our things. So I didn't have one. He had one. His father told him not to share with me. <laughs> no? And this thing was, it was just there, but we were just 11, 12 years old, so we did not really know what was going on, but he was already fighting <laughs> against me. Bad. I did not know that. It was, and when the father comes to school, he sees the boy behind. No, this was from the same village, the same village. He will come to school, they will send for the boy, he will give the boy everything, you will now go back home and go and tell my father that I went to a school, I look for your son all over, I did not see your, that your boy is not serious. So, so when I now come home, my father will telling me this, 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 I now have to tell my father, this is not so. No, after we finished from secondary school, uh, military school, he went to academy, I did not go to academy. That was another battle. He has scored a point, me have not scored a point. I was in the army, non-commissioned, he was an officer. So each time they see me, they will press that thing. They'll be calling me because at that time I was a corporal. They'll say, Corporal Pius, how are you? Corporal Pius. <laughs> uh, when they go to town hall meetings, they will say, uh, Corporal Pius, they do not call his name Captain Aban, the <laughs> captain. No, that was how they were robbing the thing. And I just have to go to God and say, see, me, I don't know how to fight. I don't know how to keep enemies. Take this reproach away from me. And eventually, I became a commission officer. No, yeah. I became, I, I was the first naval officer from my place. He was in the army, they were serious. Of, so, Alleluia. me, I was still a goal getter. Alleluia. So, and at the end of it all, I now called the guy one day, say, I don't really understand. What is our fight? <laughs> he <laughs> was inherited. I called him, say, see, this is what they do. What in, what in the problem? He said, no problem. So what is this one? <laughs> because, you see, the families are always trying to no, so I confronted him and said, see, I don't have a problem with you, you don't have a problem with me. We are young men, let's compliment ourselves instead of fighting. And he agreed, and we are cool. He's in Cameroon today, just like me, in the diplomatic mission, I am in New York. When I went to him, my boy, I'm here, he was so happy, we laughed and all that. So it is difficult. It depends on how you handle it, like Pastor Shobala said, confront the person, I don't have a problem with you, Let's not rub it on our kids. Before the next thing you now say, children, that house, don't go there. If you go there, don't drink water. If they give you sweets, in fact, when you are passing, look this way. It begins to build hot. It begins to build hot. And another thing, again, we should understand is vengeance. Yes. Sorry, sorry, because of our time, it's 9.44, and we stop at... Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. So you want to... Oh, yeah. Okay, so an announcement, please, an announcement. So, um, because this topic, it seems like everybody has their personal vendetta. So, we're going to continue it next week. So, it will be a part two. So, if you have your question, just keep it. Don't worry. Pastor Kayade, please. Sorry. Next week, you have. Yes, thank you, Pastor. So, it's 9.44. We must wrap up now. We've only dealt with one outline. There are three outlines. So, even the one outline is not been exhausted. Yes, but I got. Okay, please. Uh, be before. Your, your comments. Oh, yeah, I, I was going to ask a question about if you actually experienced this. Like, your parent never told you that, but as a kid, you grew up seeing that animosity, that <laughs> hatred, that thing. And um, also, you try to, you know, like, have a relationship with that person and their kids, but it's always <laughs> negative. So how do you deal with that? Because, uh, like, you, like Sister Alkwe said, once beaten, once beaten, is it forever shy or twice shy? This one is every time. <laughs> like, what I do is to stop, co like, having conversation with this person. Because whenever you start that conversation, they always bring up that old debt. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, we'll answer that question next week. Uh, so, uh, our, let's, read, let's read our memory verse again. Let's close up with our memory verse. Memory verse. One, two... Go, see that no one render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, 
both among yourselves and to all men. Amen. Amen. Oh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for this lesson that we have learned today. We pray that we will not be hearers or speakers of it alone. The grace to not repay evil for evil, we receive in the name of Jesus. The grace to forgive and to release every hurt, we receive in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace, O oh God, not to offend others, but to be gracious unto them, we receive in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for inspiration as we, you know, deal with this topic. We're going to continue next week. Between now and next week, begin to inspire our thoughts. Begin to teach us. Begin to illuminate our minds. Let us come back next week and have a much more robust and a much more edifying conversation that will be inspired by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we are praying.